Joining us now for more on this developing story in Syria, Hillary Mann Lemert. She has a wealth of experience and a clear understanding of the region, including a stint as the director for Persian Gulf Affairs at the National Security Council under President George W. Bush. Hillary, welcome to the show. Thank um, you. There's a lot of moving pieces today. Mm -hmm. Help yeah. make sense of it for us. How does this change uh, the events there on the ground, would you say? Well, events were changing on the ground, which is the undercurrent here. The Western perception is that rebels are winning. Assad is going to be overthrown every day, any day. President Obama has said Assad must go. Clearly, he's going to go. But reality on the ground has significantly changed, particularly in the past six months, as the government of Syria has really rolled back every single rebel advance that we've seen. And so what's happened on the ground, this undercurrent here, is that the rebels are winning. And in that environment, Ker Secretary of State Kerry has gone to, to Moscow, met with the Russian foreign minister, and agreed to have this peace process re-inaugurated in Geneva next month. So you have this diplomatic process there. The Europeans are, in a sense, left out in the cold. They've been trying to, get to, to support the rebels, and they don't really have a case. They're forced to go to this diplomatic process with a very strong Assad government going into it. So what they've done here is they've decided, without any legal basis, to now equip themselves to equip rebels in Syria to overthrow the government in order to gain leverage mm -hmm. in this diplomatic process that they otherwise don't have. If, if you go into negotiations, you've got to have a lot of chips to put out there on the table. These are the chips that they're looking to put on the table to give them a little bit more leverage. Exactly. They, they feel that they have somehow now a plan B, that because they're not winning on the ground, they can hold it over the head of Assad and Assad's backers, that they have weapons that can somehow decisively change the situation on the ground. The problem with that is there really is no European option for changing the situation militarily on the ground. All they're going to do is lead to more conflict inside Syria and beyond that in Iraq, in Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey, and other places. I, I want you to talk a little bit about that because it seems like there's two competing worlds. There's the handshakes, the conferences, mm -hmm. the calls for democracy, diplomacy, and yet on the ground you don't hear anything about democracy. You hear nothing but uh, recrimination, mm -hmm. revenge. Um, it seems like these two competing narratives going, how does one impact the other, or does it? Well, the United States and our so-called European allies use the, the veneer, the rhetoric of democracy without any real content to it. The entire play here is about the balance of power. The United States and our European allies want there to be a pro-American political and security order in the Middle East, and we see that as crucial to have Syria in our corner. The, uh, on the other side of that are countries like Iran, China, Russia, the BRICS, other kind of emerging independent powers who don't really want the United States to continue to pursue dominance in the Middle East and to try to assert a balance of power in their favor. So this is very much about the balance of power. Nobody on any side, the Saudis and the Qataris that are arming the Syrian rebels, they're not trying to support democracy in Syria. We're not trying to support democracy in Syria. The Iranians aren't. Nobody is. This is entirely about the balance of power. What happens next? What do you see happening next? I mean, will diplomacy, is there a chance that it might actually, there might be a breakthrough? That, that is the only way. The question is timing, whether we're going to be able to get a real diplomatic process started next month, or whether, like with the, the kind of similar conflict we had in Lebanon years ago, it will take 15 years of civil war to get to a diplomatic process. There is no military solution. The population is divided. You cannot kill off all of those who oppose Assad, and you can't kill off all of those who support Assad. There is only a political solution. The question is just whether we can get it started next month, or we have to wait years and tens of thousands mm. of bodies and political institutions. Let's hope not. But, Hillary, always a pleasure having you on the broadcast, and I have a feeling you're going to be back again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much.